problem. What, what the hell are you doing, man? That's my character. I'm the trash man. I come out, I throw trash all over the, all over the ring. And then I start eating garbage. And then I pick up the trash can and I smash the guy on that. Oh, that's going to be a disaster. No, no, nobody's going to get hurt. What's up, everyone? This is Marsman here. And welcome to Marsman Gaming. With the inclusion of the Halo show, and the announcement of new gaming movies and TV shows over the horizon, the general feeling towards these shows and movies has been, let's just say, <coughs> mixed. In this video, I answer the question, are gaming movies and TV shows destined to fail? How the hell do you make a good video game movie? And is it possible for the new upcoming shows to actually stick the landing? We discuss all this and more, so let's just jump into it. But what it feels like to be an eternity, the gaming industry has tried to bring its influence into cinema. I mean, let's be honest, with the rise of the action genre throughout the 80s and 90s and the growing popularity into the international community, it only makes sense for the gaming industry to try to bring their top level titles to the big screen. That being said, directors have had a really difficult time to actually accomplish this feat, and they've been really inconsistent with trying to bring video games to the forefront. If you look at IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, and Metacritic, there have only been three live action movies that have reached a 50 score on all three platforms. And those movies were Mortal Kombat 1995, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, and Detective Pikachu. Three. Only three. It seems that the directors don't have the secret formula that is needed to make a successful gaming movie or show. And many struggle to find the best way to do it. Well guys, this seems like a perfect job for Marsman Gaming. By the end of the video, I will tackle the biggest issues that these directors had when trying to make these movies and analyze in what ways could they really fix the direction of their shows so that they can be successful in the future. In my opinion, the flaws that these movies and shows have lies with three categories. The story, the characters, and the setting and or atmosphere. By analyzing these three topics, I'll be able to break down the reasons why gaming shows and movies were, have had failed up to this point and how might they be able to fix their wrongs going forward. First thing first, let's jump into the story. So when analyzing the story, we need to understand first what I mean by that. Obviously the games that make the jump to become a movie were widely popular and have good stories behind them because at the end of the day, they were top levels in their respective industry. But when these games make the jump to cinema, I can remember countless times that directors have made quote unquote modifications to adjust the story to fit the growing audience of the time. And whenever I hear this, I usually just roll my eyes because at the end of the day, what this tells me is that directors essentially are going to be changing the story completely to fit whatever artistic means that they want. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a fan of allowing people to express themselves artistically and show off what they got. But if you're going to change something so drastically that it doesn't even look similar to what it was before in the game, then I'm not really a fan of it. What I noticed right away is that most films that drift away from the lore are going to be the ones that fail more often. For example, the Resident Evil series tried to mirror some of the key concepts that were found in the actual games. However, as more and more movies came out, this became less about zombies and more about showing off how Alice is the identical twin to Captain Marvel. It became so action-packed and it was just so different than what most fans of the series were used to. Now don't get me wrong, there were some games in the series like Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 4 that did show off some of that action-packed feelings, but not to this level. This feels like it was over the top and they were just trying to gather a lot of money through action-packed sequences rather than sticking to the guns that made Resident Evil famous in the first place. Now, I'm not asking for directors to follow the games exactly, because sometimes the directors want to add their own spice to the pot. Now, one thing to make sure you understand, directors, is that if you decide to go further away from the lore, then there's going to be a risk that you will fail because the fans that are going to be watching your series may not agree with what your decisions are. Let's look at another example. The Super Mario Bros. movie was literally taking the iconic Mario story and characters and just turned it into a whole dumpster fire and tried to bring in the more darker mentality with a whole new types of characters and story plots that may try to make sense of it all. Bowser is a business tycoon. Peach isn't even in the movie. Koopas and Goombas are basically disfigured bodyguards. It's just, let's just be honest, it's straight up crap. This is crap to the point where actors part of the movie when asked, what was the worst thing you ever done in your life? Their response was, I was a part of the Super Mario Brothers movie. You might ask me then, Marsman, how do you make a good story in a gaming movie or show? 
Well, it's really not that complicated. Now, a good example of doing it relatively in the right way would actually be Detective Pikachu. I can guarantee you when this movie was first announced, I thought it was going to be hot garbage. Ryan Reynolds playing as Pikachu has got me worried the entire time when they made that first announcement. But overall, the movie was pretty good. You played the Detective Pikachu games, essentially they stuck to the same basic premise that was found in the original title. They added some adaption, but essentially stuck to the core concepts that made the game fun. The core concept where Detective Pikachu was trying to help the protagonist find a father from a mysterious incident and basically just rolled with it. Most of the story was consistent and it ended up doing very well in the box office. This was considered one of the higher rated gaming movies out there on record. And essentially all they did was keep consistent to the game while adding some minor changes to make it more according to the current times. And then, wow, they were actually successful. What it tells me is that you don't need to keep everything consistent. Keeping it close enough is all that really matters. And that's why this was a pretty good rated movie. Next thing let's talk about, and probably my most important feature is the character. What we remember most of the video games are the legendary characters that we grew up loving when we first picked up a controller for the first time. Characters like Master Chief, Super Mario, Nathan Drake, all were legendary in their own right. But then brought to the big screen, they were completely butchered in some way, shape, or form. What I feel is the most important thing going forward in these movies and shows is that they should keep the characters as consistent to the games as humanly possible. Whenever they start drifting away from the core concepts that make the characters as great as they were, then all of a sudden they become dull, they become cringy, and they just basically become a dumpster fire or just a non-watchable version of what we enjoy to see on the video game. A perfect example of what not to do with a gaming character has to be Master Chief from the Halo TV series on Paramount+. Plus. If you analyze Master Chief on the show, you can see that he is completely different than what he was in the video games. When it comes to the video games, Master Chief is relatively motionless and uses his actions to show his emotion rather than words. He gives you quick one-liners to kind of show you what he's thinking. And then lastly, he basically sticks to the mission no matter what. And the Master Chief that we got from the TV show was absolutely opposite in every single way. The Master Chief from the show, I should call him Master Cheeks instead, essentially is extremely emotional, is an idiot, and basically does everything opposite of what he tells him to do because he just feels like not following what you say. Now, you may say, Mars, don't you think you're overreacting a little bit here? Don't you feel like maybe, you know, a slight change in characters isn't that bad? You know what? I'll play devil's advocate here. I think that making some slight changes is not necessarily the worst thing. But if you want to make sure that the audience likes the character, you should keep the core things that make the video game character enjoyable and fun and legendary and bring that to the TV show or movie so that those fans watching that are going to recognize that that's the character they grew up watching. And let's just say you make some adjustments to the character. As long as they are fitting that core belief or core concept that makes them fun, then that's it. That's all you really need. A perfect example of how a movie or show had adapted characters in the right way has to be Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2. Now, if you look at the character from the movie, essentially he mirrors exactly what the, the video game character was like. And similar to the mannerisms, similar to the voice acting, they all were consistent. Now, what this tells me is that even though the Sonic the Hedgehog movie story-wise was not necessarily the same as it was in the video games because now you're bringing it into a live action sequence, but keeping the character exactly closely identical to the games makes the movie as enjoyable as possible. If the Halo show had kept Master Chief exactly the same way as he was in the video games with the current silver timeline story, then I can almost guarantee you that the show's outlook would be completely different. The people watching the shows, guys, are the fans of the game. And if you're not really going to stay consistent to that character that those, those, those gamers love, then you're not really doing justice by the fans. The biggest malpractice a director can do is turn and change your most beloved character to meet a broader audience and turn the character into a straight up dumpster fire. This is just crap and we should be better than that. Lastly, we need to talk about the setting and the atmosphere. But I noticed that's really difficult for directors to do is capture the aura that made the video games so appealing to so many people and bring it to their shows or movies. For example, the Uncharted film and the Halo TV show did not do a great job of incorporating the soundtrack into these shows and movies 
when they were literally legendary in their games. Halo is so well known for its soundtrack that basically, including myself, I can literally listen to the Halo soundtrack all day long and enjoy myself because of the fact that these songs were so iconic with the game and they really bring out the emotion of what the situation is. The same thing goes for Uncharted. Basically, a lot of the songs from Uncharted are classics and essentially bring the emotion to the table, to the forefront, that really show off the situation, that intensity that is happening. And it feels like for both the Halo TV show and the Uncharted movie, they fail to do that on both aspects. Now, what I'll give them credit for is that both Uncharted movie and the Halo TV show did a decent job at bringing in the atmospheres of the setting and location instead of bringing in everything. For example, when you're looking at the Halo TV show, feeling of looking at the Halo ring or being on reach, some of these areas looked really cool and some of the animations they had with it were pretty fascinating, but they did not incorporate as much as you would like to see, especially when you look at the Halo games, they have so many different types of environments that were there and they were lacking that in the Halo TV show. And then when they finally have a great moment in the show itself, they fail to really incorporate any song that mirrors the games. And I remember, and I'm not trying to spoil anything here, but when they first show a Halo ring in the show, there is a scene where it's like, this could be such a big deal if they actually had the original Halo track that matches it. Because when you see this in the games, it was legendary. Whenever you hear the Halo main theme, when you're stepping on the Halo ring, it's just iconic. And it just feels like the show failed to incorporate. I thought, honestly, Assassin's Creed and the Cuphead show were actually a pretty good example of how to incorporate the atmosphere from the games and bring it to your show or movie. The most recent Assassin's Creed movie was actually a separate story that was found in Spain and essentially brought an entire new aspect and situation to the entirety of the Assassin's Creed series. Now, what I thought they did a great job was include aspects from the previous games like the Templars and obviously jumping off the roofs onto into hay patches and all these other things that kind of made those games famous for these little quirks that they added. Now, I thought Assassin's Creed could have been better, but some of those aspects of the atmosphere, they did a pretty decent job also including some music. The Cuphead Show literally is a sleeper hit on both the video game and the TV show. They do a great job of incorporating the art style and music that were famous from the games and brought it to the big screen. The show had gotten so much respect because of the fact that they were taking on a challenge of making a TV show for Cuphead, but on top of that, they stuck so close to the art style and the emotion that was brought from the games and they were successful doing so. What this tells me is that if directors try to incorporate the music and emotion that was brought in the games into their TV shows and movies, then they would instantly get bonus points and more often fans would be happy with what they made. As an avid gamer, I'm always advocating for my favorite games to be added to the big screen. Over the past few decades, directors have shown that they actually suck at making TV shows and movies that can capture the essence from their gaming counterparts. Either they're changing the story completely to not even be close to what the original game was like, or they're butchering our favorite characters and changing them completely, making them absolute opposites of what they were in the games, or they fail to incorporate the atmosphere and emotion that was brought in the games to their TV shows or movies. Now, with that being said, there have been a few directors that were successful at incorporating these components into the shows and movies. So what this tells me is that it's possible. In my opinion, in order for these directors to make the step in the right direction, they need to make sure they hit these three criteria. When it comes to the story, try to mirror the games as much as you can. Because if you really think about it, these games writing was so popular that they become instant successes in the gaming industry. So why try to change it too much when you already know you have a hit on your hands? Now, what you can do is make some adjustments so that it feels natural to you as a director, but I would not drift too far away because we've seen how that's failed in the past. Look at what makes the games memorable and prioritize. Many directors don't realize that the groups of people that are coming to watch these gaming shows and movies are the gamers themselves. So if you're trying to basically broaden your audience, the backbone of everyone trying to watch your shows and movies are the gamers that were fans of the original title. So by you changing everything, essentially what it does is it spits in the face of those that came to watch it. They will be the first ones to tell you that this movie sucks. So in your best interest, it's honestly the smart idea to appease to these groups by making your gaming shows and movies appeal to those audiences by staying consistent to the game itself. Because if you don't, essentially you're going to embarrass yourself in front of everyone. Because I've seen a lot of shows that had great ideas, but when they start 
separating themselves from the game and start telling the fans that no what you like is wrong and this is the best route going forward you're literally embarrassing yourself and everyone is kind of tired of seeing that now with the most upcoming releases in the super mario movie and the last of us tv show series with sony i want to give you guys some advice if you stick as close to the story as you possibly can and try to keep the characters as similar to the games as possible then you guys are going to be all right if not then i'll have a new duo shows to add to the list of failed attempts of a video game adaption to the big screen thank you everyone for watching if you haven't done so yet please make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content follow us on social media on discord and twitter and that's located in the description below until next time this is mars band from mars band gaming signing off peace out guys